responsible for text of email in 2000 campaigns in 2019 is Björn Sjut. Please welcome Björn Sjut. Thank you very much. So great to be here today. And what a crowd. If you've been to OMR last year, the deep dive stage was much, much smaller. So I'm excited uh, to see all of you here today. We thought we would spend like 20 minutes to talk a little bit about how a channel is changing that arguably never changes, right? So what are the innovations in email? What topics should we as online marketers actually focus on when driving the next level of success in email? And I'd like to talk about four topics today. So the first one would be, if you think about your email marketing infrastructure this year, what are actually the three pillars you should look for? And then there's a big potential change upcoming. That's interactive email or AMP for email that Google brought out of private beta earlier this year. Then we'll talk a little bit about how to increase email productivity, not in the sense that you can write more emails faster, but when you want to design more email marketing templates faster. And then fourth, I'll talk a little bit about a technical subject, which is webhooks and how that can enable US marketers to drive more success from email. So let's dive right in. We'll talk about the three pillars of an email marketing infrastructure. And if we think about email marketing, we typically think about this first box, right? We talk about the newsletter and the marketing automation part. However, when we look at our sales colleagues in the sales team, they are also using much more sophisticated email platforms today than maybe five years ago. So where newsletter marketing automation is maybe dominated by a MailChimp or by more enterprising platforms like an Emasis, the sales colleagues work more with products like a HubSpot Sales Hub or Pipedrive that allows them to send out emails via uh, the normal email infrastructure. And then, of course, we have transactional emails uh, that is enhanced by templates. So when building a holistic email marketing infrastructure, you should keep all of those areas uh, because on the newsletter and marketing automation side, we really need to be able to focus on templates, on segmentation and tracking. On the sales side, we want to focus on individual sales reps' productivity to enable them to be able to communicate more efficiently with their leads. And on the transactional email side, that's basically the emails triggered by an application. The typical example would be a sign-up confirmation or an invoice. We want to focus on immediate delivery. If we look at what we're seeing in the marketplace, the lines between those pillars are increasingly blurry, right? So these two, the one is a Squarespace uh, sign-up confirmation email, uh, and the other one is a Bitly uh, welcome mail. Now, what is this? Is this like a transactional email because you signed up to the platform? Or is it part of a marketing automation that welcomes the user, that helps them to succeed with the platform? Or take this one, right? It's a Coursera mail and a GetResponse mail. Is this a very segmented marketing automation email? Or is this actually a sales email uh, that is sent by an individual sales rep? So obviously, where these lines are blurring, we as online marketers might be responsible for the whole email infrastructure from a branding and from also a performance perspective. And what does that mean? What should you as marketers focus on? Well, we think you should focus on four areas. The first one is you should think about in the GDPR era how you can actually manage tracking consent and also general consent in terms of sending emails. If you look at the B2B area, it's extremely important uh, that you have a consistent tracking in your CRM system. That, for example, your sales colleagues can see if someone has opened and clicked on a newsletter because that's valuable information for the sales colleagues to follow up on. And currently, we think that a lot of the companies we work with, they don't really manage GDPR consent in any way, uh, or maybe in a very isolated, siloed way uh, at all. So there's huge potential to get that under control. Then you will want to leverage the tracking data for the whole customer journey, right? So you would want to have a consistent tracking infrastructure 
across all of the emails that you're sending. So not a tracking on MailChimp and a separate tracking uh, on the sales reps mails, but something that you can tie that together in. And you can use, for example, Google Analytics email tracking pixels as a way to solidify and unify that data. Then, of course, you are building up data and knowledge about your email marketing recipients in different silos. Maybe you have data about segmentation in HubSpot and in MailChimp. So if you think about how you can send more personalized mail in an automated way, you want to have those personalization data across uh, uh, different email channels uh, so that you can personalize sales mails as well uh, as uh, marketing automation mails. And last but not least, if you're sending from the same domain out of different sending infrastructures, for example, you're sending via SendGrid for transactional, you're sending marketing via MailChimp, and you're sending sales mails via HubSpot, and one of these areas gets a little bit out of line in terms of deliverability, it might impact your whole email marketing deliverability. So as marketers, you might want to feel more in charge of email deliverability overall in your company because obviously getting the emails into the inbox is the first step to success in email marketing. Now, if we got with these initiatives, a more holistic approach to our uh, email marketing infrastructure this year, what are we going to send? Is email itself changing? And we think there's a very interesting change uh, happening right now because Google put AMP, that's accelerated mobile pages, so if you're about SEO and web as well, you've heard about this. Uh, they have put AMP for email out of private beta in March. And when we say interactive email, what is that? Well, it's for example this. This is a Google Docs comment where in the inbox you can comment or answer a reply to a comment or resolve an issue without ever opening a web browser and going into the Google Docs document. Or this is when you're at Pinterest, how you can receive an email from Pinterest with different recommendations of what might be interesting to you, and you can save that to a board of yours without leaving the email. So it's a hugely interactive experience. If you're in the e-commerce area, like a lot of our Think3 commerce clients are, obviously a huge driver is cart abandonment mails, right? You've put something in the cart, but you didn't complete the purchase. Now, what are you going to do with that? And now, with AMP for email, we can run interactive cart abandonment mails that allows us uh, to showcase the product in a different way, get people uh, to complete the purchase more efficiently. Now, as this is a very new topic, uh, and you get a lot of blog posts about it, so we thought it might be useful for you to give you just one slide. What do you need to know about it? How can you get ready uh, for AMP? email. And the first question is obviously, why? Right? Why should you care about this? I mean, email sending just fine. Why should you look at this? Well, the big strategic shift here is that suddenly the inbox of your customers is becoming a set of mini applications. So you can drive a lot of additional value by enabling interactivity. Uh, for small tasks and therefore for increasing conversion rates. This will particularly be also relevant for mobile uh, because it allows people to react faster to email, get a purchase done faster, get a comment done faster without having to open a web browser with maybe a slow loading web page. Secondly, okay, interesting, but how do I do it? How can I actually build emails in AMP? And you might want to uh, go and check out that link. You can email me uh, and we'll send you the slides. Uh, so on amp.dev, there's a playground area where you can experiment with writing HTML code uh, for AMP. And a number of large email marketing platforms have already announced support. So SparkPost is AMP for email ready. SendGrid is AMP ready. Litmus, who's also offering a tool to design and write code for emails is AMP ready. So you might want to look at 
those tools and how they help you build your first AMP emails. And then secondly, okay, so I built those emails. Now, who's going to be able to receive them? If you've ever dabbled around with interactive email, you might know it's a huge issue in terms of client compatibility. And currently, this works for Gmail on the web. So not in the mobile app yet. It should be, but it's not there yet. However, a number of email service providers have announced that they are going to support AMP for email later this year. Outlook.com, which is obviously a big gorilla uh, in the US. Yahoo Mail, which is still very relevant. Yahoo Mail is underestimated by a lot of email marketers. In, in Germany alone, it's four million inboxes uh, that are still active. And uh, Mail.ru, if you also care about the Russian market. So we think those three topics combine on one slide what you should know to get ready for AMP later this year. We think we'll see this first in transactional emails, uh, so card abandonment mails, the Pinterest mails, but we also think it will be very useful for marketing automation that's targeted. If you think about checklist content uh, uh, that you're sending out to customers to help them onboard into software and you can actually check off uh, the topics yourself, we think that will be awesome. Now, speaking about email building, how do I organize that process? Because in a lot of companies that we work with as a client when we help them set up their CRM and marketing automation infrastructure, like building email templates is still a huge pain. And if building email templates is a huge pain, it obviously leads to, well, I'm going to send out more generic, more irrelevant mails because I simply can't afford to build enough relevant targeted templates. Now, we think about that, what is a quick fix here? And one area we really like is you don't need to build the emails necessarily in the tool that you use for sending. There are great and affordable tools. This one is a Topol IO uh, that you can use for $7 per month. And it's just an email template builder. It's fairly clean HTML. It's very easy to learn. It has an additional advantage if you're working with a lot of freelancers inside your email marketing setup that you don't need to give them access to your email marketing infrastructure where your customer data resides. You can completely separate the creative building from the sending process, which we think is great. And my recommendation, if you suffer from challenges on the productivity side, it's too expensive for you to build enough templates to send out to really small segments, Look at tools like a B Pro, look at tools like a Topol IO, and evaluate if you can make that part of your workflow process. All right. Now, once we've built a lot of beautiful, mobile optimized, super relevant templates, the question is how can I actually trigger those templates? It's often very, very hard uh, to find the right data points to communicate with your leads, with your customers, in a timely and relevant fashion. Because for most of you, you're probably not developers, it's hard to get data in real time into your email marketing platforms. So the question is, is there any kind of trick, a solution that allows you to, without writing code, take very, very deep application data, let's say events from your online application, from your store, and use that to inform a marketing automation platform to send out certain templates that are relevant. And in my opinion, that secret weapon that you should know about is the webhook. Now, what is the webhook? Uh, because if you're not a developer, you probably haven't heard about it. Or you might have heard about it, but you probably don't know exactly what it is and how you can use it. So this is a bit more technical, but I promise you, it's relevant enough to stay focused. Now, webhooks, in our view, are the secret weapon to automate a lot of stuff cheaply without employing IT or developer resources. Because instead of pulling data from an API, webhooks push the data to you where you expect it in a certain format that you can expect. And webhook is basically a fancy name for just an HTTPS request, 
just a URL that's called, nothing more. Now, that URL has a data backpack. It's literally like a backpack uh, with data. For example, it contains, like here, the email address of the customer that did an interaction. Let's say they bought something in the shop. That webhook data contains what they bought. So it comes in a very, very standardized format. Basically, key value pairs on the left side is the key, then there's a the double point, then there's the value, like the email address. And this combination, like this URL request and that data backpack, is being pushed to you. What does that mean, it's being pushed to you? Well, that data is being pushed to a URL of your choice. So it can be server on your side, but it can also be a generic service like Zapier or any other middleware, an IFTT, a Microsoft Flow. If you think about applications for this, how are you going to use it? Most of the platforms you are already working with today, they already have webhook functionality built in. You might just have never checked it out because it's more aimed at developers. So let's look at a Shopify. What is what kind of webhooks can you expect? Well, Shopify would send you a webhook uh, if any product is updated and inform you about what's updated there. When a cart is updated, when a checkout is created, when an order is paid, when a refund is initiated. So a lot of actions from deep inside the store logic that you could react on with a relevant email template. And as you've seen, there's the data pack back here uh, that allows you to add all this data into the email as variables, that allows you to send completely dynamic emails. A MailChimp will inform you when a subscriber is created, when someone's unsubscribed, when the subscribers update. So a lot of options there as well. So when you want to get into webhooks, my recommendation is what you should Google tomorrow, or maybe on Thursday after OMR, is you should check if your favorite tool the tools that are in your marketing stack, they also have webhooks, and for what? So you simply Google webhook and the tool name, and they will typically end up in the developer documentation, and that will then guide you how you can leverage them. Now, if you don't operate a server by yourself, how can you receive that webhook and push them into an email? Well, you can use tools like Zapier. So Zapier has a general webhook endpoint, looks like this, it's a URL, that you can then enter in the tools that you use as the destination for the webhook, and then Zapier gives you an interface to pull out all the single data points of the action, let's say the updated card or the deleted subscriber. So in summary, how can you use webhooks as an email marketer as your secret weapon of choice? It will work with uh, every tool that provides webhooks, so you just need to figure out that if those tools are that. You can use Zapier or any alternative, an Automate I.O., a Microsoft Flow, Connect Apps, Tray I.O., the dozens. Looking at it from an infrastructure perspective, if you really push hundreds of thousands uh, of uh, webhooks through there, it will typically get very expensive. Uh, so look a little bit at the pricing. But it's awesome to build prototypes with because you don't need developers anymore to send out relevant emails to very, very deep targeted segments of your choice. Once you have a lot of traffic and those middlewares like Zapier, they get too expensive, you should then custom code the integration to the API. <laughs> now, that summarizes our four topics uh, we think are interesting and relevant uh, for email marketers in 2019 to pick up, to look about. So our focus this year is look at the structure of your email marketing, uh, understand marketing automation, sales emails, and transactional. Look at AMP for email as maybe the way to get interactivity in the inbox. Try separating building emails from sending them and see if that can increase the productivity and understand webhooks as the secret weapon of how to automate super relevant uh, emails uh, to your customers. If you want to see the slides, if you want to get them, write me an email uh, to bjorn.suit at think3.de. I'll send you the slides back. It will probably take a few days, um, but uh, we'd be happy to do so. 
If you have questions to me or my colleagues, uh, Think3 has a booth in the uh, B5, the premium exhibition hall. It's right next to the OMR booth. Please come and visit us, uh, talk to us at the Think3 Commerce booth. We would be super happy to have you there. I'm also available today and tomorrow if you want to follow up with the chat. Thank you very much uh, for joining me in this talk. It was super nice to be on stage here. Have a great OMR.